Welcome back to the Comic Book ASM Artist. Today we're going to be doing another comic book haul. But uh, before we get to that, I wanted to show off a couple other things that I have found this week. So I found this Akira figure. As well as this one here. At a local value village. So... Always wanted these for a long time, and they had them. They were, you know, they're not complete, but it's okay. They're still in pretty good shape, so I'm just glad I finally have them. And this is the one that is supposed to come with a motorcycle, but obviously he doesn't have it. But his pants have this weird rubber tension on them. So I don't really want to bend them, but he is more or less leaning up against this guy here. And then the, the goggles do move as well, but, and then he's supposed to have a robot arm, but he just had this one on here. And these are from the McFarlane line they did a, a while back. And then I was finally able to find the original color colored version of The Killing Joke. This has the original neon bright colors in it. And I had only read the recolored one by Brian Bolin, so I'm glad that I finally have the original color one. This is still a reprint of that book, but you know, it's still a lot closer to the original, so I'm that much more glad that I found it. It does have like the DCComics.com stuff on it, so I know that it's fairly recent reprint. I don't exactly know when. I'd probably say around 2000 or so. It does mention uh, Jim Lee as the editor-director of Wildstorm. So that could even be 2004, maybe. Or a little earlier. But yeah, I'm glad I finally found that. And then these I found as well at a Half Price Books. I found the Killing Joke one there too. And these, I didn't even know they were a book until I saw this cover uh, on the internet maybe a couple years ago. And I just knew that Steve Root had done it. And it was kind of in the back of my mind. And they had all three of them there. And they're by him as well as Carl Kaisel. And they have more of a traditional approach to them, obviously. And I haven't read them yet, so but I feel that they'll they'll have a good good storyline. Like those guys are really good, so they have stuff like this. And then when I got these, I was like, that's what they're missing, is they need to start doing more prestige books. And then, you know, yesterday, DC announced their Black Label books. So I'm really excited that they're going to be doing that. Because a lot of these stories are really great stories, and they don't worry about, you know, changing the history of the character, having an effect the ongoing books or anything like that, so... It's really cool that they're going to be doing that again, and I hope it goes well for them. And then I did get a Alan Grant pop fig today. Got this from my local comic shop. And 
here's what the other ones look like on the back. And they had all of them except for Ian Malcolm and Dennis Nedry. And then eventually they'll have one of Ellie Sattler with the uh, red Jeep later. But here he is. So I'm glad because the only other Alan Grant toy they had was, you know, the really tiny action figure. So this is pretty cool. And then he's holding a little raptor claw. So, yeah. It'll make a really nice addition. All right, now we can move on to the regular comic haul here for you. First off, we have Spawn, 283. And this one has um, the, the different artist on it, but Sean will be back on the next one, he said. But I do like this guy's work, too. He was um, the original reason why I picked up Spawn. And Todd still inks over this guy, too. I his name is... C I think it's just Simon, but I'm not quite sure if it's spelled uniquely, but at this point they have just come back from Japan, and uh, his daughter is displaying superpowers. But I guess she gets possessed, so it's supposedly not her. Either way, though, that's that's the best way I can explain it. But it'll be interesting to see what happens. And then I believe that um, she will have her own book here soon, too. I really like this image here. I'm still behind though. I have quite a few books that I still have to read from my last haul. Next we have Turtles, number 79.
Next we have Action Comics, number 998. Another beautiful cover here. And that cover is by Carrie Andrews. I don't know, in the back of my mind I could have sworn their art looked different than that prior, but I could be wrong. But I do really enjoy these covers they're making. I saw they just released their 1980s cover for Action Comics number 1000. It looks really good. It almost looks like a tribute to the Christopher Reeve Superman a little bit. But I don't know because that one, um, they didn't show that image any of the promotional material during the pre-order period so hopefully my shop will still have some of those available the cover I'm getting right now is the Steve Rude one from the I want to say the 30s Next we have Detective Comics, number 975, and I just read, I wasn't aware that um, Tinian is wrapping up writing Detective Comics soon, and I don't know who's going to um, take over after him, but uh, he's been writing this and helping with a lot of other bad books, so... I'm surprised that he's not going to be working on it anymore, but it's it's been about a year or so, so he's definitely had a good run. And uh, what they're working on now in the book is definitely things that they were hinting along the way, so I do understand him moving on. And the arc he will have wanted to tell will be complete, so. Recently I've been on a kick to try and find some older books, you know, not necessarily valuable ones, but just, you know, earlier, like in, around the 90s or so. Just because I do have good memories associated with that. I remember the, I'm trying to remember the name of the arc, but it was like Superman was time traveling. And that's definitely a, a storyline that I want to reacquire. My brother was the one who was collecting that run in the early 90s. And that was by Jurgens and Jerry Ordway at the time. And then I just want to find some, you know, John Byrne stuff. I do have... I want to say the first five of the Man of Steel he had done. I want to get um, Bogdanov's first couple of Man of Steel whenever they relaunch that. Maybe just a couple books like that. Just to have them. We have Silencer number two.
Next we have Teen Titans, number 17. I was thinking the other arc I want to get from Superman was whenever he got infected with the red kryptonite. And I used to remember what that arc was called. And he had like some crazy hallucinations and stuff. And I really want to reacquire that one. Next we have the Terrifics, number one. And I did pick up one of my copies before the con for uh, Doc Shainer to sign for me. He designed their uh, costumes and he'll be doing some of the later issues on this book. And it was actually uh, my copy of the comic was the first he had seen, so he saw the finished product through my my book I had had him sign, so that was pretty cool. That's the thing, you, you never know whenever you have something signed, whether the artist has seen it or not, and there's been a couple instances, and the same Emerald City Con I had um, Carl Keisel as well as Addie Grantoff had not seen the um, the promotional posters I was getting signed by them. So it's always nice to surprise the artists every now and then. It's a cool feeling. Next we have the tick, number three. And I really like this artist they have on the tick now. They haven't really been able to maintain a, um, a monthly shipping schedule with it. I think it's coming out bi-monthly more or less. But I would say quality-wise, this series has been one of the better produced ones, so I'm glad they're taking their time on it. And it's really interesting, too.
Next we have Captain America, number 699. Next we have Batman number 42. I wish they didn't have that extra font on there. Next we have Superman number 42. Looks like this is a callback to um, the first issue they did together. Pretty close to uh, shot for shot here, especially that one. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's absolutely the same. I hope Bendis does some good work for Superman. Yeah, it looks like this whole one is a retelling of the same Superman number one issue. Only with Bizarro.
next we have Nightwing number 40. And the artist of Nightwing was at the Comic Con, but I couldn't find his table, so didn't get to meet him. But it does happen sometimes, unfortunately. But I'm sure he'll be back, so I'm not too worried about it. Next we have Batman White Knight, number six, and this is the variant, I'm glad I got the one that's got the old 1989 Batmobile on there. I believe this is the variant, I saw more with the um, Batgirl cover than this one, so, but I just wanted that Batmobile on there more than anything else. Speaking of, That does it for uh, showcasing the um, the books. Now I'm just going to take a couple minutes out for those of you who are here for the uh, other sound effects. And next couple minutes here we'll make some sounds for you to hopefully relax you, yeah, okay? We'll start with the box.
gonna do it for tonight. Thanks. Have a good day or night.